Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Will Power TV. How's everyone doing considering this whole COVID-19 epidemic? I'm so sorry, I've been gone for quite a bit. I know a lot has been going on in my life lately, but I wanted to jump on here just to update and share a few important things and thoughts with everyone. Um, I'm good, I'm here at home, social distancing, but I'm usually home anyways, so this is really nothing new for me. Not much has changed uh, here with me besides tons of work and not finding the essentials at the stores uh, or online and well told to not wear masks in public, but I really don't go out anyway, so it doesn't really make a difference. I've been social distancing myself technically since I first got injured. So I would say roughly around 12 years now. I'm familiar with what everyone is going through right now at home. You know, you know, financially, mentally, physically, and emotionally, uh, bouncing off the four walls, not knowing what to do. Um, I know that isolation can cause a lot of harm to your psyche. And I personally highly recommend to stay busy with something at home. Now, some of it has been my choice to distance myself from people, but of course not all of it. And what I mean by that is I have to be careful who's around me because, well, I do live alone and I can become easy prey to certain people who obviously like to take advantage of others. That is why I keep my emergency alert button with me at all times or wherever I go. Uh, I keep my doors locked at all times. And I'm always keeping an eye out for people who show signs of no good intentions or symptoms of, you know, sickness like stuffy nose, coughing, sneezing, uh, fevers, you know, stuff like that. I pretty much, you know, distance myself and well, some people have gotten pretty offended by my reactions here at home with my Lysol. <laughs> but what most don't understand is how critical and difficult for me it is not to have a fully functional body and, you know, to fight some of these infections and having a immune deficiency puts me at a higher risk. I know that if I get sick by someone sneezing or coughing around me, well, that person won't be around me uh, or by my side helping me get better. Now, the other part that keeps me here at home, uh, well, UTIs and bladder spasms have plagued me over the last few years. And I've been trying to figure out, you know, alternative solutions or a solution in order to gain a little bit more quality of life and not be home so much in pain or in the hospital every single month. I, I have to constantly monitor myself or my health uh, because I get these spontaneous bladder spasms and UTIs due to the full or to the superior catheter. And it's ruined quite a lot of plans for me when I wanna go out. Uh, I might consider going back to cathing or possibly a urostomy bag. I, I really don't know yet. Uh, my bladder spasms become very aggressive sometimes and painful triggering autonomic dysreflexia and all i can do for severe bladder spasms is go lay down uh, take a few prescribed muscle relaxers um, the bladder spasms usually last uh, around maybe one to three days to three days i'm sorry uh, it just depends but if i'm not able to tolerate or control them I go to the ER immediately just to make sure I've maybe not contracted the UTI. They both give me the same symptoms, so it's sometimes really hard to tell what it could be. I do, however, take a daily baclofen for body spasms and oxybutyn or and merbitric for bladder spasms, but it only helps me very, very little sometimes after taking it for such a long time. I was scheduled to see my urologist uh, about four weeks ago, almost five, for a procedure to inject Botox to my bladder for OAB or overactive bladder. But unfortunately, uh, a week prior to the procedure, I got sick with a sinus infection and well, I needed to stay home and obviously get better. I, I did reschedule my procedure, but right afterwards, uh, things escalated with uh as well as COVID-19 began to spread and everything was pretty much canceled for me at that point. I do keep up 
you know, or do my best um, to stay healthy by eating well, drinking over a liter of water per day, taking my vitamins, uh, prescribed medications, lots of meditating. I love meditating every day and exercising just to stay healthy and in good spirits despite any situation I might be going through. Last year, unfortunately, in August, we had a mass shooting at one of our local Walmarts. As a matter of fact, uh, my Thanksgiving turkey video was partially filmed at that same Walmart. I mean, normally watch these horrible, evil things unfold in other states or countries. But when this hit home, roughly, I think four miles from where I live and a place where I literally do some of my shopping, I was pretty stunned, you know, to hear the news. 22 innocent lives were lost that day. And I mean, it was a sadder and more tragic day for those who were involved and also lost a loved one. To add insult to injury, the following week after the mass shooting, tragedy struck for our family as my mother sadly passed away from cirrhosis. After several days of being at the hospital and taken off of life support, on her last day, I watched my mother take her last deep breaths as she tried really, really hard to look up at me, my brother, and my sister. It was uh, an unforgettable and very devastating sight. You know, the pain I felt was unbearable. I felt helpless, but I mean, I'm aware that's gonna be life for all of us. I remained pretty quiet for some time, uh, but afterwards I struggled really, really hard to cope with my mother's loss. I have not felt depressed in such a long time, I would say almost 20 years now, and I nearly lost myself. But I mean, I promise you guys, all is well with me now. And I mean, I've, I've managed to move on. So the question is, why am I sharing this, right? We take life for granted every single day, and we only react once something tragic happens, either locally or personally. Without getting too off topic, and in my opinion, I am not a conspiracy religious or even a health expert. But guys, please get your facts straight before impulsively sharing or jumping into any crazy conclusions. Um, we don't have always the right answers. There's an airborne respiratory infection killing thousands and thousands of people globally, as well as other viruses. And well, not everything on Facebook and on the news is completely true. So what is the truth? Right, that's, that's the bigger question. Well, unfortunately, we might never know, but don't wait for this virus or toxic virus to hit home either and many more people die. I mean, this isn't survival of the fittest. This is yours and other people's loved ones at risk every single day from all sorts of things, not just COVID-19. Do your best to keep those around you safe and do try to be considerate of others. Uh, I'm aware other viruses, diseases, crimes, and even accidents take lives in the millions every single year. Back in uh, 2008, six months after I was shot, I got sick from a, a real bad sinus infection. Well, so I thought it was. I wasn't as active as I am like today, and I was pretty much bed bound 24 seven in my mom's living room. And turning to my hospital bed was nearly impossible. And uh, a warrior lift was used to get me in and out of my hospital bed. Some days I would lay in one position, uh, literally for hours. Uh, this allowed my lungs to build up quite a excessive phlegm. And well, obviously that didn't help. Things eventually turned for the worse and my body went into complete AD or uh, autonomic dysreflexia. Many people uh, with spinal cord injuries, if you don't know, we deal with this. Uh, you can also Google it to get more information. I got uncontrollable chills, uh, severe, severe shaking, and I had a high grade fever. I couldn't even speak. Uh, once again, on my way to the hospital, I closed my eyes. I began giving my last words and goodbyes, thinking this was it. I was for sure not going to make it. After arriving to the hospital, uh, I remember I was admitted and I was kept in the ICU for what seemed maybe about a week. And uh, right after that, I was moved to a private room upstairs at the hospital. 
where I think I stayed uh, for another two weeks. But honestly, guys, it was like two weeks of hell for me. I continued to have high grade fevers of 104 and 103. And I mean, I still couldn't believe how difficult it was for me not to be able to breathe even after being placed on oxygen. I literally filled, from what I remember, two suction canisters of phlegm. Uh, sometimes it was so much phlegm, I couldn't get to the suction quick enough. So what I would do, it, I would just cough it up and spit it up on the ground, you know, to avoid swallowing it. It was pretty disgusting, uh, but I mean, I literally had no choice. You know, I fought every single day to survive this infection and respiratory therapists would periodically assist me with uh, certain breathing treatments, pushing on my diaphragm uh, to you know bring up the phlegm and uh, pounding uh, lightly on my back and on my chest to get some of the phlegm out and of course be able to breathe and try to get some rest at night. But before I knew it, I was literally back to square one. The first canister, however, when I would cough up the phlegm, uh, I remember it would come out like a reddish, brownish color where I was told by one of my nurses, it was my lungs bleeding and it was from the pneumonia. So something I've never in my life experienced. And to my surprise, I had no idea I had pneumonia. But of course, uh, luckily after three weeks, uh, well, after the third week, I'm sorry, my body fought the infection and with the help of my nurses, therapists, and, and doctors, I was able to pull through. Before leaving, uh, I, I was given the pneumonia vaccine. And for the next several weeks after leaving the hospital, I had to stay on oxygen, uh, some breathing treatments, and certain medications to help continue loosen up the phlegm. Throughout the years, uh, I've gotten sick from various, various sinus infections and a few bad colds. But I mean, I, I've managed, you know, to kind of space them out a bit and recover pretty quickly by avoiding going out to certain places uh, when cold and flu seasons are in. And of course, washing my hands, as well as, you know, keeping me and my apartment clean. Uh, I get a lot of allergies and I'm a bit of a germaphobe. And uh, I'm, I'm like the biggest drama queen once I get sick. But I mean, most guys are, right? Uh, I make sure to pull out the essentials right away. Uh, number one for me is clear my lungs as soon as possible by moving around in bed and try to cough up any phlegm. Uh, my providers do help me uh, by pounding lightly on my back and on my chest, like at the hospital, uh, just to loosen up some of the phlegm and be able to get it out. I take calls and I speak very little to people. And that's just to avoid, you know, more irritation to my throat. I drink hot, hot lemon teas and I eat soups, you know, just the basics. I apply Vicks vapor rub to my chest and I do put some inside my nose. And I do also apply some inside of these face masks, uh, some of my N95s that I have. And it's helped me with my breathing like, like a nebulizer and avoid also spreading the infection to anybody that visits me. And more importantly, my providers. I take Tylenol and ibuprofen for fevers. And as I previously mentioned before, I drink about over a liter of water per day. I've also taken extra measures by removing all of my carpet here in my apartment. I remember sleeping mountains of dirt right after maintenance removed my carpet. Uh, I did wrap both of my mattresses with uh, some covers I got from Amazon. Uh, and I removed all of my curtains in my apartment as well. And I did this in order to reduce a lot of the dust allergens, dust mites, and any bed bugs. But of course, not everything is 100% bulletproof, but I won't lie, it has helped. As a manual wheelchair user, my hands are constantly on, you know, the wheels that roll on the ground, you know, allowing me to pick up all sorts of germs everywhere and literally anywhere I go. So this is why I have my providers sanitize my floors with Clorox. Um, I would say on a daily, I have to be extra careful not to touch my face unless I use either hand sanitizer or wash my hands, especially if I'm out in public. I know it's very, very difficult to remember. Sometimes, you know, because we're always on the go and, you know, it's something that I personally never practiced as much uh, up until now. For those who, you know, called, messaged me uh, or stopped by to check up on me, 
to help me out with a couple of things I've needed at home. You know, thank you so much. So my brother and uh, my providers have helped me with food and a couple of things that I've needed here in my home. My friend Lucy actually made a couple of masks for me, which I then modified uh, with a couple of things that I wanted just in case, you know, um, I needed to go out or somebody visited me. We ended up, or my providers ended up cutting some of my shorts and we ended up uh, sewing uh, that one part of the shorts onto the mask. Uh, and this this allowed for me to slide in towards the bottom uh, a surgical mask, which I have a few here at my house. Some of these uh, surgical masks. That way I could add like an extra layer of protection to it and have some filter. But in case I do run out of any surgical masks, I could actually, you know, just add any coffee filters or napkins just to give it, you know, a little bit more filterization, I guess. And uh, we did put some Velcros at the bottom. So the, the masks or anything that I put in there, you know, fall out. We also put a, um, a wire up on top so it could crease right here and give it a little bit of an extra seal. Uh, these aren't really hard to put on. You know, they're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I'm not gonna wear them all the way, but I mean, it's it's worked out pretty good for what it's, what it's for. Uh, the other mask she brought me was one of these. Uh, I know my provider found it very hilarious. She thought it looked like a bra or not like a bra, but one of the cups of it. It was just funny, but uh, pretty easy to put on as well. Uh, nothing much to it. Uh, it is cloth. Uh, I might modify it too. Uh, I'm not too sure. In case I do need to go to the hospital for an emergency, I do have, as I previously mentioned, I do have my N95s and I modified specifically this one because the last time I was in the hospital, uh, which wasn't too long ago, the rubber bands actually snapped off and it really defeated the purpose of even having the mask with me. I had to hold it with my hand. So as soon as I got home, I talked to my providers. I asked them if maybe there was straps in, in my closet that I could use. And we found a couple of them from my urine leg bags. And that's pretty much what we use. Uh, they're pretty secure. They're very, very comfortable, very stretchy. So. I mean, I'm able to wear it for a long time without it being so uncomfortable. They were stapled and sewed on, so they're definitely not coming off. Uh, I have a couple of my surgical masks. Uh, there's another one that was brought to me by my provider, which I haven't used. Uh, it's just been hanging in there and uh, it's black, you know, one of my favorite colors. I know everybody has thoughts on when to wear gloves, and when to wear masks, in my opinion, uh, I think you can wear a mask, but it, it really defeats the purpose if you're really not washing your hands. That's where the critical part comes from, uh, where some of this virus tends to spread the most, is that surfaces aren't being cleaned, things aren't being cleaned. And I mean, I know that contact with people who don't show any symptoms, uh, they tend to spread the virus as well. Unfortunately, for some time, I, I couldn't figure out what to do because I literally ran out of disinfectant wipes. We couldn't find any. I ended up going online and I found a YouTube video where this person added a spoon of uh, bleach to a cup of water. She then poured it onto the wipes and or generic type of wipes. And that pretty much made some sanitizing wipes. I also gave a few out to some of my neighbors. I live in an elderly community. I thought, well, I could just maybe help them out and uh, you know, hopefully they feel a little bit better trying to sanitize things because a lot of these things that are brought to me from the outside, which is my mail or food that's bought from the stores, we tend to sanitize everything that you know comes into comes in through the door. Uh, unfortunately for other things that I haven't been able to create here at home is you know my hand sanitizer, it's you know pretty much almost gone. I've been trying to use it whenever I do need it or in case you know I can go wash my hands right away. Uh, one of the things that I use a lot is my Lysol. You know, it has quite a little bit at the bottom. I'm only trying to use it when it's really, really necessary and I really have no option. Hopefully these things become available, like I said, online. I I mean, it's just sad to know that some of these things are not, oops, some of these things are not available right now. Try to find alternative solutions at your home. There's quite a couple of videos on YouTube, very helpful videos. Nothing lasts forever except, well, death and maybe taxes. And although I don't hold the cure or the answers for COVID-19, if you feel sick, please stay at home. 
contact your doctor and if things worsen, call 911 for further instructions. I mean, I'm sure this whole situation will soon pass. And I mean, once it has, we can all return back to our normal daily lives or whatever's left of it for now. Of course, we will need to take precaution no matter what after this entire mess. Well, I mean, I know I will. So before I go, words cannot describe or express how truly sorry I am for those who've lost a loved one uh, to COVID-19 or for any reason. Losing my mother last year uh, truly devastated me. So I know the feeling of loss. Just remember, um, as long as you live, your loved ones will live on through you forever. So as always, love you guys. And thank you so much for tuning in and watching, subscribing, commenting, and liking all my videos. Uh, please take care of yourselves. And I hope this video helped you out.